Paul Wells, good to see you again. How are uh, thanks you? for coming in to speak with me. Uh, a lot of journalists have been trying to get Jane Philpott to talk. You did it this week, and uh, let's start there. Why do you think that uh, she, she finally decided she wanted to sit down and at least say some more about what's happened here? I think she finally decided that if she didn't uh, speak, uh, and, and, and give fuller explanation for her departure from cabinet, then it would end up just being a strange thing that happened. Remember Jane Philpott? She used to be the health minister. And, you know, the, this is the way some people talk about Michael Chong, who resigned from uh, Stephen Harper's campaign on a, uh, from Stephen Harper's cabinet on a point of principle. And so she, she was not relishing uh, this interview. She was extraordinarily careful in picking her language as she talked. And she was under no illusions that this was going to make her more popular in, in the Liberal caucus. Yeah, well, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, she, she, she clearly knows, and, uh, the, and she talks about it in the interview, that uh, how's the reception in caucus kind of mixed, uh, maybe less so even after today. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of Liberals will be upset by, by what she's had to say. Uh, so what's her objective in speaking to you? Um, the, the way she phrases it is that she was elected by the people of Markham Stovall and that they have questions and they don't believe they've gotten uh, sufficient answers to those questions. And she agrees. Um, and and uh, she says there was a sustained effort to influence the Attorney General and through her, the public prosecutor, on an important criminal trial and that that calls into disrepute the administration of justice in this country. And that, and that explanations are, uh, are still needed from the Prime Minister. She does give us a hint, I mean, in, in the comments with you about, uh, I want to get into a little bit about how she thinks she can actually tell this story, what, what the next step is. But she does give us a hint of, of where to look, perhaps. And that's in one of the answers she gives to you. There was a reference by Jerry Butts in his testimony of the fact that I spoke to the Prime Minister on January 6th about SNC's uh, desire to have a DPA. This was more than a month before the story became public, and I ordinarily would not have been allowed to share that information, but of course it's already on the public record. I think Canadians might want to know why I would have raised that with the Prime Minister a month before the public knew about it. Why would I have felt there was a reason why former Minister Wilson-Raybould should not have been shuffled out of justice? Uh, is that, I mean, she's, she's sort of told us where, part of where we need to look to find out more to the story, right? Yeah, the, the suggestion is, that there were a lot of conversations about a deferred prosecution agreement and SNC-Lavalin for a long time before the Globe and Mail broke the story. And that uh, the only part that the sort of curtain has been uh, pulled back on is uh, her conversation with the Prime Minister on the day that she was told about the shuffle. Right. And her immediate reaction, as Gerald Butts has reported, is, is this about SNC-Lavalin? And so she's saying, why would that be on my brain? I'm, I'm over here being Minister of right. Indigenous Services. Why am I thinking about this? And, and she believes there are, uh, I think it's fair to say, many conversations that have not yet come to light about that. What, what does she... Uh, so she obviously believes the whole story hasn't been told. Uh, I mean, how does she think it can be told? I mean, you, you, you put some possibilities to her. Uh, how are we going to get to the next level here? Um, She's less clear on that, frankly. Uh, she, she believes that the uh, Parliamentary Commission has been unfairly throttled. She does not believe that the Ethics Commissioner has the tools that he would need to get to the bottom of this. Uh, all she said was um, the Prime Minister should waive privilege, including their cabinet confidences, right. so that they can speak more, more fully. I haven't seen that happen very often, so I'm not sure whether it would happen in this case. Um. So how do these how do these comments from Jane Philpot uh, in your interview uh, with you how do they complicate things further now for the Prime Minister? Well, the House of Commons is in the middle of an, an extended marathon of confidence votes, which the opposition triggered because they say that the Liberals are covering up the truth of, in this story. Now they've got one of Justin Trudeau's most prestigious former cabinet ministers saying she agrees with the opposition. Uh, now she's careful to say at the bottom of the interview that she sure hopes that Liberals get re-elected and she doesn't think that Andrew Scheer should be Prime Minister, but she has just given powerful ammunition to the opposition. To continue, to, to, keep, to keep pressing for, for yeah. more information on this. Is it interesting to you that neither Jody Wilson-Raybould or Jane Philpott are, are in the House for these, these marathon, this marathon voting session and some of the stories floating around today are they've essentially been told to stay away from the votes because they they might you know there's some concern that they might face 
aggression in the House from their own colleagues, you know, on the yeah. Liberal side of the House. I've heard nothing about how Jane Philpott is organizing her day, uh, but I, I know that she was um, uh, uh, not looking forward to the publication of this interview. She has not, she did not anticipate that, that, that uh, this interview becoming public would, would simplify her life. She knew that it was going to get worse for a right. while. And you did this, we should point out, you did this earlier in the week, Yeah. this interview, so she may not have had any inkling that this was likely to happen and, and th there'd be this massive standoff in the House procedurally that would put this interview today in the limelight and give another context to what's, what's happening in the House of Commons today, right? Yeah, um, but I, I, I checked with her yesterday and I said we're ready to go on Thursday morning. And she said, uh, "So she knows she, yeah, yeah, she knew what was what was coming." What what about the suggestion in some quarters uh, that you know Jody Wilson Raybould and Jane Philpott harbor their own political ambitions, and that's what this is about—that Jane Philpott's sort of, you know, laying tarmac here for a, for a takeoff at a leadership bid, perhaps in the province of Ontario. You know? Yeah. So Philpott was careful to say that Wilson Raybould can answer for herself on those questions, uh, but she's denied any uh, leadership ambition federally, and she went out of her way to mention the Ontario rumors and say that there's no truth to those either. Right. So she doesn't, she claims uh, that she has no higher political aspirations. Uh, she left me with the strong impression that she thinks that this is, um, uh, that this whole business will not help her as a, uh, as a liberal career politician. And so uh, it kind of comes back to where we started. So what does she want? I mean, is it clear to you now what, what she wants other than to, uh, well, let me leave it there. What does she want? Um, she took some oaths when she became a privy councillor and a cabinet minister, and she was given a thick ethical handbook by the prime minister and the clerk of the privy council and told to read it and take it to heart. And she believes that her obligations with regards to those oaths and those ethics guidelines uh, prohibit her from staying in cabinet and pretending that nothing bad happened on the SNC level and file. Right. So while, the, while their caucus colleagues are trying to put this behind them and the Prime Minister is trying to move on from it, she's keeping it alive. She must know that. Uh, so I don't know if you had a chance to get into it with her. Why does she, why does she want to stay in the caucus? I mean, why, why would you want to walk into a caucus room every, every Wednesday and have half the room going, oh, here she is again? So Jane Philpott is an odd duck, eh? She's a, she's, um, uh, a religious uh, woman. The first uh, public interview that I'm aware of that she gave was on, a, was on an evangelical talk show. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have a career in politics. She has, I believe, political convictions that are to some extent compatible with all of the different parties. She's not a liberal, she wasn't a liberal 15 years ago. Right. Um, and uh, so she believes that um, uh, of the parties that are on offer, the Liberals are far superior for a bunch of reasons that she gets into in the interview. That she doesn't think that Stephen, that Andrew Shearer should be the Prime Minister, and she's you know uh, torn by the prospect that maybe what she's doing could help the Conservatives politically. Um, but um, she doesn't. She's not in politics to advance the cause of the Liberal Party. She's in the Liberal Party to advance the causes that she believes in. And she believes that the Liberal Party is in conflict with some of those beliefs. All right. And, uh, thanks for your perspective, Paul, and uh, good job on the interview, and thanks for coming to talk about it. Thanks very much.